Light is incredibly important to succulents and all other plants. Without light, they would simply die. But succulents don't just need any old light. Most need direct sunlight and lots of it. The great majority of succulents have developed in places with very little shade where sun shines for most of the time. The sun gives plants energy through photosynthesis. Some plants can photosynthesize even in indirect sun, but succulent, bar a few exceptions, cannot do this well. But succulents are clever little things. When the conditions are not favorable for growth, they start looking for greener pastures. And since they don't have legs to move, succulents will direct their growth to where they think conditions will be better. Before we have a look at how to fix stretched or leggy succulents, I'd like to talk about why this kind of growth happens. In my opinion, it is important to identify the causes so they can be fixed permanently and are not repeated. The number one reason for etiolated and leggy plants is lack of light. A few months ago, I've done this experiment to show how insufficient light makes some succulents grow droopy leaves, but as we can see here, it also makes them grow tall. The first plant was put in a greenhouse with 70% shade factor where I keep my indoor plants and is by far the most stretched. 70% is still pretty bright and much better than any light indoors. This one was in a greenhouse with 50% shade and looks much better but still stretched out. They are stretching upwards because the greenhouse sits in full sun and the light is distributed evenly. It's just not enough. And finally, this plant has been under 30% shade and looks pretty good. If it was in full sun, it would be even more compact. But let me show you what proper lack of light does to succulents. This tray was a bit of a whoopsie. I accidentally left it in the back of a greenhouse on a shelf that was completely shaded by huge monsteras. The plant still got some light, even a couple of hours of morning sun, but it's obviously not nearly enough. These are properly etiolated succulents, stretched out, quite pale and in search of light. This is what would likely happen if you put these types of succulents in a bright spot indoors. The tops don't look too bad though as I discovered them after doing a bit of cleanup and popped them back outside a few weeks ago. We'll get back to this tray later on and try and fix it. Succulents can also grow tall when they have lack of root space or are planted in heavy soil. This is not etiolated growth and the tops will likely still stay compact and colourful. This is what severely root-bound succulents can look like. They will stretch and stretch in the hope of landing on some fresh soil. They'll also lose most of their leaves and will solely concentrate on finding better growing conditions. Many succulents naturally grow tall and may seem a bit stretched, but this is just what they are like. There is absolutely nothing wrong with them. There are two ways of fixing etiolated and leggy succulents, such as the ones in this tray. The first one is to simply chop the top bits off. This is also known as beheading succulents. While this may seem a little drastic, it is a good fix and in the long term you're doubling up your plants. The top will be planted again in a new pot, this time placed in an appropriate light so they can grow compact. The bottom part with the roots will also be placed in a good light and left alone until it starts growing new heads. New heads will look something like this and will start growing on the leftover stalk and the part where the cut has been made. This to me is a win-win. I'm going to go ahead and chop all of the heads off. Mm -hmm. 
If the stalks are not too long, the second approach is to pull the plant out and simply repot and place in a pot with good light. When succulents are severely etiolated like this, they are also very fragile. The leaves will drop off at the slightest touch and the stalks snap easily. You'll have to be careful when handling these. When placing succulents that have become leggy back into the sun, make sure to do so gradually. If they are just thrown back into full sun straight away, especially in summer, they can burn easily. Shade cloth will bounce harmful UV off, so if you have one, the succulents can go right under. Otherwise, start with morning sun and slowly increase afternoon sun exposure after a couple of weeks. There is one final hack I want to show you that will maximize the amount of plants you can get out of this. When the stalk has stretched this much, it is possible to divide it three or four more times. Plant each individual bit just like a cutting and in time it won't turn into a whole new plant. Leave a few leaves at the very bottom part that is rooted and that will also grow into a new plant. I also need to sort out these two from earlier. The only way to go here is to chop the top off. Because the plant is so tall, I don't really care if I damage a couple of leaves, as I'll be taking a few off anyway. But if you want a super clean cut, you can use a piece of very thin string like a floss or a fishing line to separate. All of the drooping leaves are going as well. They would likely rot anyway as they'd sink right into the potting mix. Now I'll let them all sit for 24 hours so the wound heals and then they'll be ready to plant. Right, so this nice pile of cuttings is now ready to plant and be moved to a better sunnier spot. The cuttings will go into these clean pots filled with succulent potting mix. First I'm going to loosen up the top part so the stalks insert easier. Because they are fragile, they break easy. To get a fuller pot faster, I'll put more than one cutting in these smaller pots. The little succulents that were not too bad are just going to be planted up to the bit where the rosette gets a bit thicker. And that's it! If you have stretched out plants because they've been root bound, you can simply repot into a new pot with fresh potting mix. This will help them grow new branches and offsets which will eventually hide the bare stalks. If you want a more immediate result, you can chop the heads just like we did with the etiolated plants. And that's it for today. I hope this video was useful and if you have a question or you'd like to add something you can leave a comment below. To learn more about succulents you can subscribe to our channel or go to our website succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.